preserving the car is also a means of preserving a bygone era of service. Enjoy your dinner. Bon appetit. Panache that you're just not going to see today. Expensive private rail car is plenty. But for owner Patrick Henry, railroad cars are a little like potato chips. He couldn't have just one. I had the opportunity to purchase a train car and I basically lost my head. Patrick not only lost his head, but also his heart to these two beautiful rail cars. I was going to buy one car and I ended up buying two cars. Today, those cars are known as the Evelyn Henry, named after Patrick Henry's mother, and the Warren R. Henry, in memory of his father. Well, my father was a railroad man for 41 years on the Santa Fe Railroad, and that's where I fell in love with trains. He would always take us on his inspection trips, and we'd get to do the fine dining, and I was so fortunate when I was a child, I traveled on the back of trains for almost, it seemed like, every summer. Now, Patrick can relive those summertime trips aboard his very own matching pair of tricked-out rail cars, a passion that Patrick shares with his friends and family that come aboard. The elegant interior of the Warren R. Henry Dome Car was inspired by legendary architect Frank Lloyd Wright and originally completed in 1955. Packed inside is a full kitchen, dining room, and a spacious lounge on the main level. Upstairs flashes with snapshots of America zooming by. Here in the main dining room, the car's pampered passengers can take their meals in high style while bathing in the soothing glow of this massive, one-of-a-kind lighting fixture. I think a lot of people, when they first come on board, is they don't understand just how elegant these train cars can be. Patrick has worked hard to restore the elegance. This picture shows the beautiful dining room table was missing when he first got the Warren Henry. So I went and researched where the table was. And he eventually found it, collecting dust in a Seattle garage. So I brought it back to what it should have looked like originally when it was built. The nearby glass-fronted china cabinets featured doors adorned with stunning leaded glass that matched the opulent overhead lighting fixture. In this cabinet here, we house all of our signature glassware. Onboard service manager Cashley Greenwood says literally everything is tightly tucked away. Everything here, as you can see, has a slot. So this one is designed specifically for the smaller glasses. We have the wine glasses here, which has a larger slot. Among the treasures, stemware from the luxurious Super Chief service, which ran halfway across the country, from Chicago to LA. And now we come to an innovation of luxury travel unique in modern railroading. The Super Chief was operated by the Santa Fe Railroad, where Patrick once worked, and his father, Warren, built a career. The ultimate in comfort and luxury. The parlor provides a panoramic view and comfy seating. There are plush sofas and love seats, and swivel chairs that let you chat with friends as you sit back and watch the world go by. Tucked right around the corner, a modern beverage station with its very own well-stocked wine fridge. The gourmet dinner and all the other delicious food is prepared right here in this mini but mighty kitchen. Special latches keep plates in place as the car rips down the rail. And the chef whips up delicacy after delicacy. They're thinking you're gonna get a little box lunch of a turkey sandwich, and next thing they know, they're getting shrimp wraps or lobster tail. And so I think people are amazed by the quality of the food that's cooked on board. For dinner, guests are treated to an amazing four-course, five-star feast, complete with personalized menus and a choice of fine wines, craft beers, and handcrafted cocktails. I usually 
usually come home a little bit heavier, though, than, <laughs> so I have to die in a few days after we get off the train trip. Terry Graham, Patrick's girlfriend, may hate jumping on the diet train, but loves riding the rails. It's so relaxing. I'm used to doing air travel because I'm a flight attendant. In air travel, the destination is what's important. Well, train travel is the opposite of that. You don't really care about the destination. You enjoy every minute of being on the rails, looking out the window, relaxing, having your dinner, having your lunch, and enjoying every moment of the ride. And when it's finally time to turn in, Terry and the other guests make their way to the Evelyn Henry. Patrick's beautiful private sleeping car was built in 1954 and sleeps up to 14 people in one master suite and six double bedrooms. I think one of the best parts of riding on the train is the rocking motion. We have so many people tell us they sleep better on the train than they do in their own house because of the slow rocking motion. The double bedrooms feature private vanities with hand linens and essential toiletries and direct access to a semi-private bath with all the amenities, including tiled showers. And for those who demand the best of the best, there's the Grand Canyon. The deluxe master suite with a spacious brass bed for two, plush quilted bedding, and a totally private master bath where you can enjoy a hot, relaxing shower. And then slip between the covers and let the rhythm of the rails rock you to sleep. It's the one time that you get away from all the problems, all the challenges, is when you get on a train and you wake up in the morning to the smell of bacon and the sleeper. It's the one time that you just really get to enjoy yourself and see America like no one else can. And you see it from ground level and you're not seeing it from 35,000 feet. And then to be able to experience it on a private train car, it just doesn't get any better than that. Ever wonder where the phrase, the red carpet treatment came from? Well, here's a clue. The 20th Century Limited train line was the first to roll it out in 1938. The royal red carpet stretched the length of a football field, from the engine room to the observation car, and hosted the most famous feat of its day. The 20th Century Limited was the most famous train in the world because it operated on a very, very fast schedule between New York and Chicago. So it carried all the movie stars, corporate executives, money moguls. From there, people would get on Super Chief and go to L.A. The 20th Century Limited was not only used by movie stars, it was used in the Hitchcock thriller, North by Northwest, with Eva Marie Saint and Cary Grant. But this so-called train to the tycoon's most famous role was as America's first unofficial bullet train. We're going 90 miles an hour. Remember, automobiles didn't travel with that speed on interstate highways. They were traveling on two-lane roads throughout the United States at probably 50 miles an hour or so. So this was fast. Raymond Klaus now owns the company which manages the Hickory Creek. A car from the 20th Century Limited line customized by revolutionary designer Henry Dreyfus. Henry Dreyfus designed everything from matchbook covers to advertisements to furnishings, blankets, special silverware design. Henry Dreyfus designs are a part of America's fabric. They include telephones, vacuum cleaners, thermostats, the Polaroid camera, and even a steam iron that, not surprisingly, looks like a locomotive. Henry Dreyfus designed a streamlined steam locomotive, which was the Hudson style, one of the most famous engines on the New York Central Railroad. The unique thing about this car is the Dreyfus furniture layout. Dreyfus wanted to bring in that New York club atmosphere into his equipment that warm feeling he wanted to use earth tones wanted his people to feel very comfortable in the environment that he recreated in these cars all of Dreyfus's genius was almost destroyed in 1967 when the hickory was sold the grand old car had been reconfigured then gutted by the time Raymond rescued it in 1992 
You can see from the outline on the floor where the old rooms had been. The car was on the scrap line at Palmetto, Florida. They really didn't care about it anymore, and the vandals got to it, and they stole things out of the inside of the car, and they graffitied up the inside of the car and uh, broke windows. I remember looking at the car and saying to my father, you're nuts. You cannot restore this. It should be razor blades. Raymond's son, Scott, tried to talk his dad out of restoring the Hickory Creek, but soon found it would become a family project. In fact, Scott did a lot of the electrical work himself. A lot of sweat, a lot of blood, busted knuckles, and memories rebuilding that car. The car was in unbelievable condition. There were no windows in it. The outside of the body was rotted out. The trucks were in terrible condition. The floor pan was completely rotted through. We had to go to the Pullman archives and find all the original drawings so we could rebuild the car back to its original specifications. It was a monumental task. It took a lot of dedication. It took a lot of engineering. It took a lot of research to get it to the point where it is today. Reproducing the ventilation grills alone cost close to $60,000. And the total restoration took more than five years. Raymond and his team brought the Hickory Creek back to her glory days and beyond. The car was originally designed as a lounge buffet car, so it was only used for drinks and maybe some hors d'oeuvres and things like that. And then people would come back here traditionally, listen to the radio, have a smoke, a game of cards with their friends, and enjoy the same ring. This proud piece of the 20th Century Limited line is now ready to ride into the 21st century. The car is currently Amtrak certified for 110 miles an hour, and we've reached that speed of 110 miles an hour with this car. Getting the Hickory back on track was a haul, but for Raymond Klaus and his family, it was a labor of love. A lot of people have asked me, why did you spend five years of your life taking a car that was ready to go to the scrap heap and bring it back? It's a very unique and very historic piece of railroad equipment. I never had a chance to ride the 20th Century Limited. My sons never had a chance to ride the 20th Century Limited. And both my sons have worked on this piece of equipment with me. So it gives me great pride to have my family involved. It's probably the most famous lightweight passenger car in the world right now because it did operate on the most famous train in the world. It's a great way to see America. Every tricked out train is unique and brings something special to town. But this next beauty could be called the ringleader. Ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, step right up to the greatest show, Unearthed. It's the private, opulent, luxury train car. The John Ringling Road when the most famous circus in the world came to town. John Ringling was one of four other brothers that created the great entertainment empire.